Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and I am really excited to share this really cool technique with you today. This is a little mini book that we're gonna make. This is baby pictures of my niece's little girl, Addison. She's now almost eight, and I'm gonna give her the scrapbook that I've made. You can see that I'm holding it closed with these little hair bands. If I turn it around to the back, you can see I have some elephant stickers on the back and you can see that they actually are hair bands. I think it's gonna make it a little bit easier for her if she's got something to hold it closed other than a ribbon, which would be easy to lose. But I wanna share with you how cool it is to take a photo and transfer it onto canvas because this cover, this front and back cover are both little canvases. When you look inside, I've got pages that can either accordion fold like this or in my case, I think at her age, it might be more difficult for her if I leave it this way. Of course, I'm gonna add in, I still have all more photos I'm gonna add. You can see I'm gonna add uh, another photo here and I'm gonna have messages from myself to her. She's coming down and I'm gonna have her write her name in her handwriting and I'm gonna include that as well. But as well as having an accordion folded option. You can also go back and on the back side, every other page, you can put adhesive so that it would be more like a book. So these two pages would be stuck together. These two pages would be stuck together. And in effect, what that gives you is a book something that opens and closes like a book, which I think for her age might be a little bit easier for her to handle. But it's up to you completely because when you make it yourself, you get to decide. In order to start, we're gonna start with this really cool technique. You can get canvases in the craft store or the hobby store in all different sizes. If you look at the table, you can see I have a four by six option, um, a six by six option, eight by 10 option. What I wanted to do was make it into a mini book. So I got these little four inch squares. And instead of being stretched, I'll bring this so you can see. In this case, you can see it stretched around the edges because there, there's wooden stretcher bars that's holding this together. I wanted these thinner ones because they were gonna be the front and back cover of my scrapbook. So mine has thick chipboard inside. It, the whole thing is so easy. The canvas is already prepped and ready to go. What you wanna do first is you wanna start with your photo. So take the photo and you want to create a copy of it. Now, be, normally I would do this in black and white, but I loved this little splash of red from this Gerber Daisy that she's holding. So. I actually made a color copy, but the, the technique works best if you have a laser print. Instead of an, an inkjet printer, you want a laser printer. And I Googled it and I discovered that the difference is if in your cartridge, if the ink is a powder, then that is a laser. If the inside the cartridge is a liquid, then that means that it's an inkjet. So you want the powder one, which is the laser. That works best for this technique. All of the you know, Kinko's and Staples and all those places that make copies, they have those um, as well. So you can always just go have a copy made. Once you have the copy made and you've trimmed it down, in my case, so that there's just a slight small border that will fit all the way around the edges, then you want to actually prepare the canvas. One other thing to remember, if you look at the, my print and you look at my actual scrapbook, notice how it's flipped. It's gonna sit like this. So if the, what you're using has a word, maybe they're wearing a t-shirt with a word on it, remember it's gonna be flipped the opposite way. So if there's a word on the t-shirt um, or on the image that's gonna read backwards, then all you need to do is have it flipped when you have it printed. Once you have that ready, then it's time to do the canvas. Now I used a gel medium and I picked one that is, it's called a heavy, a super heavy and a matte finish. So I'm gonna open this up so you can see. I've already prepared one because it, it's gonna to have to dry. But what you would do is you would just take this and with a paintbrush, you can see it's very much like paste really and you're going to just do a really thick, heavy coat all over on the canvas. I'm not really doing it, but I've already done one. Once you do that and you have a heavy coat here on the canvas, you take your image, you flip it over, you set it right into the image, 
and you don't want to move it around you want to set it down and then press on it and just press all the way around so you're sure that you have good adhesion it's not going to slide around on you because it has the gel medium that's going to hold it there and then you need to let it set like overnight this one i just I had the time to do this a few days ago so mine's actually set for a few days but overnight is enough now the next stage once it's dry what you want to do is you want to get it wet and with your finger i'm going to rub off the paper backing and the ink will have embedded into the canvas so i just have a sprayer here and i'm going to just spray it you'll see as i spray it on that you'll start to see the ink image will start to show through. I think I have this on um, one solid. It, it would be better if I had this on. Oh, and my sprayer is really leaking. So let me just move this water all over the whole surface. And now I can see, I don't know how easily you can see, but see how you start to see the ink through there. You can see that this is the bottom because there's that red flower. Once you have it wet, you're just going to start rubbing and you just with your finger, you start pulling off the paper. See how it's gonna pull off the paper backing and it's going to leave the photo. Now at some point, if you rub too much, you actually can pull some of the ink off. So I sort of went over the whole thing once and then look to see how much more I wanted to still pull off. This technique works best if you pick something that you like kind of that vintagey look. You can go back and re-spritz with water as many times as you need to, especially if you pick the larger canvases, then you might have to, you know, do this in, in pieces. But I can go back and I can get it wet, I can get it wet, you know, more more times to pull off and see how I want you to look at this area here I've gotten it wet and I'm actually now starting to pull off some of the ink because I want that to look a little bit distressed on the edge I want instead of a really flat straight seam I want it to look a little older so I'm going to actually do that on purpose places where it's still a little bit cloudy indicates that there's still a little bit of paper stuck on there. So as you work with it, while it's got the water and kind of wet, you can sort of, you can tell by looking and you can also feel a little bit because the paper's peeling off. You just keep peeling until, as you notice down here, you realize that it's starting to pull the ink. Then you know you've got all the paper off. So while it's damp like this is when you want to go back and add the next, the sealant. So what I'm going to do is set this down here so that I can go right around the edges. I'm going to just, don't worry, I know it looks a little cloudy because and that's just because it's white. It is going to dry clear but you don't need a super heavy coat because you can go back and do multiple coats once one coat dries. So I just want to get all of the lines going the same direction on this coating. And then I'm going to make sure that all the edges are nice. And then I'm gonna just let it dry and we'll come back and look at it. It dries pretty fast. And we'll come back and look at it a little bit and you'll see just how cool this technique really is. I just wanted to show you when it's dry, you can see that there are a few places where I didn't get all the paper rubbed off. And if I bring in my finished one and you compare, there's a few places on this one as well. This spot right here, I can see a little bit of paper. It, it sort of adds to the vintage look. However, if you want to avoid it, instead of putting the sealant on while it's still so wet, 
what you can do is let it get a little more dry because as the print dries before the sealant, you'll start to see any place where there's a little bit of paper left. And then you can add a little more uh, water and rub a little bit more off. And you can do it with any of your favorite photos. But as I said, I think it works best if you pick something that looks kind of vintagey because that's what happens as you rub with your finger. It's not a perfect science. And so if you have a picture that needs to look perfect, it may not be the best choice for this. For the back cover, what I did was I took <coughs> just a sticker sheet. You can see that I have one of the elephants in the middle and then I cut this elephant in half and I put the front half of the elephant here and I put the back half of the elephant there. Just stuck them down and then I went back with the same Mod Podge and I went back and I did a layer of Mod Podge over the top of that. I want the whole thing sealed because a little eight-year-old girl who's going to probably have dirty hands is going to hold on to this and be playing with this. Now when it comes time to do the inside, really that's a snap. All you want to do, and it depends what size canvas you chose. I chose, as I said, a canvas that was a four inch square. So I wanted the interior pages to be slightly smaller. So this folded up square is a three and three quarter inch square. In order for it to fold like a book where you have a valley fold on the both ends, you need there to be six pages or six sections inside. So for me, my paper started as like a 25 inch sheet of paper. I cut it a three and three quarter inch strip and then I came in and I marked three and three quarter inches every score line so that my finish size ends up being 22 and a half inches by three and three quarters. Yours may vary based on the size that you choose. I think it's easiest to go back and do all the decorating of these pages inside first. So if I open this up, you can see because she was holding the Gerber Daisy, I used the flower theme inside and I've just done a few simple decorations. I'm going to have, as I mentioned, her handwriting. I'm going to add in more photos and more journaling, but do all this, I think, while it's loose and flat. I think it's easier while it's like this. Then you're just going to take adhesive and you're going to put solid adhesive on what would be this inside front page. And then what would be the cover? You're going to just attach it right inside with just a little border that shows all the way around. That's why I made a little quarter inch smaller. You're going to fasten it down, put adhesive on here, and do the same thing with the back cover so that when you're finished, you'll have the inside pages. And as I said, if you want to turn it from accordion into a book, then every other page on the back side, you're going to put adhesive and you're going to fasten these pages together and these pages together so that if we go back and look at the finished one again, you can see how <clears throat> it can remain as accordion or it can turn into a book. And then the final touch, if you want to hold it closed, depending on who it's for, you can pull a ribbon and tie it in a bow. You can use these fun hair bands like I did. You can even use, you know, any of the thicker decorative hair bands are fun to use as well. All of these are so cool. You know, when you try this technique though, don't expect a pristine result. The finished canvas looks just a little vintage. I love it. And I really hope that you do too.